While it isn't always possible to take a vacation when you need it most, a tasty meal in the right company can be a mini holiday in itself. You'll have to arrange your own dining companions and Chef Dion Venkatas is here with the perfect summer break menu. Just to compete in the Olympics, you have to be an extraordinary talent. And I'm not even talking about winning bronze, silver or gold. Just being there, representing your entire country, means that you have to be something special. Well, today, we're with Olympic chef Dion Vengatas, who's cooking up a summer storm and going for gold. Gold, yeah. Woo! <laughs> What's cooking, good looking? We're going to be making this beautiful, refreshing iced tea. You know, during summer, you want to sort of like bake in the sun and just enjoy it. But at the same time, you also want to be refreshed as well. And then taking into consideration, you took your entire winter just to get your body into shape. You still want to keep things on a good sort of low-key health vibe as well. So we've got some fresh wakami that I've soaked in a little bit of water. I don't use any bags for the tea actually, so it's natural sort of flavors come through and it's more cleaner as well. Uh, seaweed. Wakami seaweed, straight term seaweed. Okay, yeah. okay, taste it. okay. Seaweed in iced tea? Yeah, we're getting a green iced tea. Mm, it's pretty clean flavored, yeah? Okay, mm, and it's fresh. To start off with, we're gonna start with the citrus, the orange. It's quite rustic, so you can pretty leave everything inside, else the flavour is going to get better the more it sits in it. Some of the lime. Once you have all of your citrus at the base, you want to start with the actual flavour that's going to add to the seaweed. The ginger. There's quite a bit of ginger in here, as you can see. You can see most of the sort of juices releasing from the actual ginger. At this point, you want to add the granulated sugar. It's important that it's granulated. The wakami is quite bitter as it is, and it's already been seeping in the water, so it's gonna have this sort of bitter tinge to it. We got a nice, bright, fresh acidity coming from the orange and the lime. Now that balance with the sugar is just gonna bring it all together. It's not gonna be sweet whatsoever, it's just gonna have this sort of undertone of sweetness. Okay, and you literally just wanna scoop all of this into your bowl. Now for the star of our show. The seaweed. The seaweed to make our own green tea. Even the water goes in? With the water, because the water sort of made it like seaweed tea. I just want to get it all stirred together. So some of the sugar dissolves. At this point, it could be quite rough and vigorous with it. Some ice. For the iced tea, naturally. Of course. And that's it, as that's simple it. as that. Okay. That ginger makes it so fresh. What's next? We're going to be making this raw, slightly roasted cauliflower salad. But the whole philosophy around it is sort of taking you back to the way chefs should have been cooking or the way our Oma sort of cooked and taught us how to cook, utilizing every single thing off an ingredient. So what I've done is taken the actual hearts of the cauliflower, that's the stem of it, and we've thinly shaved them and lightly pickled them with a little bit of salt, rice oil, vinegar and mirin. Then we've taken the leaves of the actual stems that's like sort of yes. cuddled the cauliflower itself. You can look at it, wow. And it's normally discarded. Now there's a little vein that's attached to the actual leaves. That vein, what we've done is we've sliced them into paper strips and then we've chiffonade them and put them in ice water. But if you taste them, there, it's like if you take a whole cauliflower, juice the cauliflower and you drink it, you literally get that flavor from it. I chuck all of this. Hmm? My granny would shout at me if she knew that. You see? So it's teaching people how to cook again. So over here, what we've done, we've taken the most boring part of the cauliflower, the florets that everybody uses, and we've tossed them in a pan, like dry roasted them, but very quickly, so we still keep it nice and raw inside. A bit of this masala mix, curry leaves fresh tossed through, coriander seeds that's been toasted and crushed fresh, and cumin seeds as well. When you toast them and crush them last minute and add it to the cauliflower, those flavors sort of linger in side of the actual cauliflower itself when you're eating it. But the beautiful thing about it is mm, it's still got the crunch in it. But it works so nice with the actual salad. Okay, so there's two dressing that's gonna accompany the salad. It's this yogurt dressing. We got this, it's just this freshness of summer that comes through green chili. We've de-seeded it, so the punch and heat is not there, but it's got this beautiful fragrance that comes through of the actual flavor of the green chili, a bit of fresh coriander and fresh mint. And then we actually hang the yogurt, so we get all its excess liquid out, so it's more thicker and intensified. So we just wanna place that panna cotta that we've had. It's very delicate, so just gently sort of Leave it at the base. Next, you just want to have your florets just placed around. We're just going to put some of the pickles around. 
on top of it. The leaves, we just want to dress lightly with a bit of the curry leaf dressing. Then those stems that we were speaking about. Don't be shy with these stems because this just brings this dish alive. Your crunchy bits you just want to sprinkle over the actual salad. And then some of those curry leaves. And then lastly you just want to put a few dollops of the actual yoga dressing in between and around the actual salad. And voila, there we go. Dion, this is a masterpiece. I don't even want to eat it, I just want to look at it. Dion, what are your favorite summer ingredients? I just automatically think of stone fruit. So I got this Asian plum salad that I'm gonna make. Plums are beautiful now this time of mm. summer. I've used two types stone of them. Stone fruit. Oh, exactly, one that's a bit more sour and one that's got a bit more sweetness, but the skin is quite tangy as well, so it will work really well together when we're working together. Okay, so we're just gonna take our plums and you wanna cut them into sort of chunks, but very random cuts, but keeping them nice and big as well, so when you eat them, you get a burst of plum coming through. Importantly, do not remove the skins because it's this nice sweetness from the flesh and then you get this burst of tangy acidity that comes from the actual skins. And they grow really young spring onions, so they're quite tender as well and they're not cut very fine, so they're kept in patterns or chunks. Yeah. And the greener part will just cut slightly finer, so it's more evenly distributed. All in. You can get it all in. For the dressing, we're just going to use some of the ginger. I've just peeled them and then green chili that we've de-seeded. We just want the flavor of the actual green chili, and then we're gonna muddle it up into the actual post-mortem. We're just gonna put a bit of red chili that I've just chiffoned out and cut into sort of long strips, and then put a bit of ice into it as well, just to shock it up. A very small piece of garlic. You don't wanna get it into a paste as well, you wanna taste some of the ginger and the actual garlic in it. And then here we have our soya sauce, the mudron and the oyster sauce. Scoop that inside. Pour this straight into our bowl. Then we want to take some of our pomegranate and just bash it in. Then you just want to gently stir it around and then straight into our serving bowl. The salad will work prime with a beautiful piece of duck and it's nice as it is on its own as well. My mouth is watering just by looking at this food. We're going to be starting with the pawpaw salad right now. I've chosen green pawpaw but not completely green. It's got a slight sweetness to it as well. I'm just going to cut up the pawpaw. Again, random chunks because you want to get that burst of fresh, greeny pawpaw with a little bit of sweetness as well. Spring onion in chunks again. Put all of it in as well, please. Okay, for the dressing, we're gonna use a bit of lemongrass, which I've just cut in half and taken the tender pieces of it. Ginger, thinly sliced, green chili with outer seeds again, and then just a small piece of garlic. Again, just start mushing in the beginning to get them all a bit finer. I just got a bit of rice wine vinegar here, murren, and a touch of fish sauce. Murren's like a sweet sort of rice wine vinegar. Just get it in everything, lemongrass and all. So I've got some ginger that I've just thinly chiffonated, some peanuts that I've toasted pretty far because I want that peanut oil flavor to come through, a bit of daikon that I've just cut into sticks, some red radish or slightly spiciness, and then lots of this chili. <laughs> and then mug bean sprouts that I've planted very, very quickly in boiling water and then shocked it in some ice water. And then we just want to finish it off with a bit of lime. I've taken some of the green pawpaw and just shaved them. Not for presentation only, just for the textural difference as well, because now when you're gonna, we're gonna mix the salad up and the ones that have been shaved thinly are gonna sort of wilt a bit and get that rubbery texture to it. And the ones that we've left in chunks are just gonna be like biting into an actual apple. <laughs> Crunchy. Crunchy, yes. To mix it up, two spoons, and then we can just pass our bowl, we can sort of put it together. If you like, you can add sesame seeds to it, a bit of sesame oil. You can play around with the basic of it. You can add a lot of tomato will work with it, especially nice ripe tomatoes in summer. But this goes perfectly with all grilled fish or prawns, crab, and that's it. What does being a part of the national team mean to you? It was such an honor to have been sort of like handpicked out of a few guys and have been offered the opportunity to go for trials and 
do this cook-off and finally get the position of actually being part of the national team. It's always been my dream to be a chef and to take it to that next level where I get to represent my country and showcase my skills on an international level. It's just an absolute honor for me. Dion, to get us across the finish line, what's, what is it? We're going to be doing a bit sweets, but quite con unconventional flavors. I've prepared some of it earlier on. It's a verin, so it's basically a dessert that's laid inside of a glass. Earlier on, I've taken some peas that I've just blitzed up and incorporated a bit of white chocolate inside of it and then just set it with a little bit of gelatin, not a lot, and then made like a sort of white chocolate mousse or panna cotta, if you may call it. Then I've taken uh, raspberries, juiced them, and then cooked them down into a coolie and then placed that in the center and then set a bit of a white chocolate mousse on the side of it. Then I've taken peas that I've just dusted in a bit of icing sugar and slowly dried them out. So they got this <laughs> sweet sweetness on the outside and then this nice crunchiness and fresh pea flavor that comes through. We're gonna start off with the peas that we've lightly candied and then just dry it out. You're gonna get that onto your chocolate. Okay. So that contrast comes together. Then the raspberries just on top of the peas. I've just lightly broken the, ras the raspberries up. These candied peas, we just want to drop on top in the center, onto that raspberry coolie. Get our white chocolate. Now, I'm just going to put a lot of lime juice on top of the actual pea shoots before we put them inside. And then lastly, just poke it inside. There we go. A nice, fresh, crisp, colorful dessert. Dion, thank you so much for the culinary experience today. You're absolutely welcome. And wow, I had so much fun cooking with you today. All of these vibrant colors, it was so amazing putting this set together.